everyone, how's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, 9.34 p.m. That's California time here. December 18th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 5.0 earthquake. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Out here around the Philippines area, it looks like. Pretty good cluster of activity stirring up there right now. Uh, let's see, is the USGS actually picking that up? That five-pointer came in just about 10 minutes ago, so not being picked up yet by the USGS, but also we got some newer activity down across the Fiji area, so uh, definitely some adjustment going on. There's a uh, 4.8 here within about the last hour or so. A lot of activity stirring up here across the Western Pacific right now. Uh, even some activity back behind the Nankai Trough. Things are on the move out here, folks. I can definitely uh, tell you that. Also, I want to show you guys the Cascadia Slow Slip event map here. Look at this. Got uh, 191 epicenters of trimmer across the southern end of the Cascadia once again. This is underneath Northern California. It fluctuates um, from the north to south on occasion here, but a lot of it in the past week or so has been mainly confined here uh, underneath the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And let's see here. We're going to go back a little time period. Just go back last week to right now. And this will update the map here the last week. You guys will see uh, where the concentration of trimmers have been down here. Now, this is not volcanic trimmer. This is a slow slip events. Basically, as the two plates here, the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate here interact with each other down below, right? This is the subducting slab. As that further gets pushed underneath this area of the Pacific Northwest and Northern California, it creates these uh, very low vibrational frequencies, and that's why it's called slow slip events or trimmer activity. And that's a sign that stress is increasing upstream into the locked area. A lot of it mainly focused down here across Northern California. So keeping an eye on it. We do have, you know, the concern that we could see a partial rupture out here of the Cascadia. Something that we haven't seen um, in this cycle yet. The last big mega quake full rupture was back in 1700. So 325 years ago now. And if we go back and look at the regular reoccurrence pattern, there's normally at least a partial rupture in between major events there. And we have yet to have one. A couple earthquakes outside of the um, Mount Rainier volcano area earlier. Uh, checking in here on California, I got a couple earthquakes there in the uh, Pleasanton Fault area, Calaveras Fault Zone. This is an area that's been swarming here recently, earthquake swarm that is. I've seen a number of earthquakes out here. This is just in the last week. If you we go back the last 30 days, that's a pretty decent number out there, over 100. 119 earthquakes there across the San Ramon area. Getting some earthquake activity ramping up on that this evening. Nothing big for now, but things are on the shuffle. Southern California, not uh, seen not seen too much activity down there. We did have a uh, 3.6 over here around the Mojave Desert earlier. Aside from that, uh, mainly smaller microquake activity out there today. Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on there. Most of the activity from this morning, but we will uh, check in here real quick and see what the latest seismograph station looks like. There's one here oh, in the last four hours or so. Now, let me bring up the website here. I can't wait for them to get the actual uh, other USGS seismograph stations uh, online. Because this here, these... Uh, these graphs are just not all that tuned uh, in terms of picking up um, earthquake activity out here. Let me see what we got next day. Well, there's some of the earthquake activity. It seems like every time I click on a map, it looks different. What's going on out here? See, there was a little earthquake here about four hours or so ago. A couple more in the last hour. Uh, it doesn't look like they're showing any of the newer quake activity, but uh, for now, nothing big going on there across Yellowstone National Park. Uh, yellow, or the uh, oil fields out here look pretty active. Quite a bit there across the Permian Basin. That means the North American plate there is on the move. Uh, normally, we'll see, thing, uh, we'll see things escalate out here across the West Coast when things start to move there 
uh, in the oil fields. Not so much going on out here across the eastern portion of the country for now, uh, but that could change. Uh, some further larger aftershock activity up there into the southern Yukon region. Actually, it looks like it's uh, down here across the plate boundary. There's a four-pointer earlier this evening. Um, yeah, that may be off the fair weather fault, but it looks like it's directly on the plate boundary here of the North American and the Pacific plate. We do get some uh, some decent-sized quakes up here on occasion. Of course, you know, when we had that 7.6, um, let's see, was that 7.6 or just a 7-pointer? I think it was a 7.1, right? Got to go back. It's actually been over a week. Crazy. Yeah, it was 7-pointer back there on the 6th. Um, when we get that adjustment there up north, it can have adverse effects out here across the area. It does look like it's straining some region down south here, some regions off the uh, this area of Alaska. Nothing big for now, but we do have some movement happening up there. Some aftershock activity where that seven-pointer struck uh, a week and a half or so ago now. I can't believe it's almost been two weeks. Uh, let's see what else we got um, around this area of Taiwan. The Philippines, quite active. Even an earthquake over here on the Manila Trench. Look at that, 4.6. Looks like there was uh, one there this morning as well. This is another major area that's capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes here. Pretty active out here. Number of fives. In fact, looking at the uh, map here today, We've got, wow, five five-pointers, almost a near six-pointer there in the uh, Kamchatka area. That actually came in as a 6.1. They downgraded that uh, early this morning. So a little bit elevated activity out here for sure. Quite a few fours in there as well. And again, things are just, just starting to shuffle up right now. Look at that deep earthquake here. That is on the, ooh, that's on that other subduction zone right here outside of Taiwan. Uh, near the uh, Japan region, but back here, deep underneath this area. So that definitely adds some strain out here across this region. Uh, last year, and I think we even had a little bit this earlier this year, we had a, a decent swarm of activity here. Uh, but this, I believe, you know, pretty much anywhere from the Nankai Trough over here towards Taiwan is uh, prime for some mega quake activity. And with all the movement happening, north and south here of the region recently and, and in the past year or so uh, it would make sense to watch this area uh, let's see if we got anything new up here uh, the latest quake of 4.3 up there in the Kamchatka area still seeing some decent movement up there got to watch this central section right here uh, of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench because that's uh, you know hasn't hasn't really had a lot of stress release out there in a while been building up some uh, steam and momentum and pressure across that area. Uh, let's see what else we got. There's a 5.7, some activity down across New Zealand. Really nothing big happening there for now. Uh, a number of deep earthquakes there. If you look on the globe, got one, two, three here. That uh, definitely let me know there that things are on the move. Even a two-pointer out in Hawaii right now. Let's go check that out real quick, see what we got. Uh, that two-pointer offshore, about nine miles underneath this area. Getting a lot of movement happening out here around the Loihi Seamount or deeper. Actually, a lot of this activity uh, way deeper than the uh, Seamount area. Let's go see the uh, Kilauea Volcano website. See if we got anything uh, new to look at here as far as the inflation data goes. And we'll see if it's working or not. Hopefully it is. I don't know. I haven't been having issues with them at night. Sometimes it takes them a little while. I'm hoping they get their their sites uh, fixed up, working properly. Uh, deformation data here across the Kilauea Volcano shows us. There's an earthquake there in the Philippines. That was the, uh, which one was that? That was that 4.8 coming in, I think. Actually, it looks like there's a little bit bigger one in there. What is that one behind it? That's a 5.1. I was going to say that looks a little big for a uh, four-pointer. So 5.1 just coming in. Uh, actually, it shows an hour, an hour and a half ago, even longer than that. So 
hard to see. There's so many earthquakes happening there, but definitely a, a sizable earthquake there on the Philippine station. Pretty good cluster of activity on the Philippine Trench, it looks like. Go back out of here real quick. 2125, I guess it is going to be that 4.8. All right. Uh, <laughs> Flip-flopping around here, I wanted to see the um, Kilauea data real quick. Still going up here. This is the inflation model, the inflation graph at the summit and the east rift zone. Not quite up to a level where we would expect to see an eruption soon. We've got a couple more days here if we follow the similar trend that we've been seeing. Uh, so that will come here yeah, maybe maybe midweek next week here coming up, possibly. Well, what is, oh, today's only Thursday, huh? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, probably maybe another few days or so there. But I don't see any change. No... Um, Unusual patterns there across the uh, inflation chart for now. Let's see what else we got out here. Pretty quiet across the, uh, well, I can't say exactly quiet, but not so much large activity out there across the Middle America Trench for now. Same for the Peru Chile Trench down here. Looks a little um, low in terms of the uh, numbers out there. Atlantic Ocean, quiet, not. Not even one earthquake out there. That's crazy. And pretty quiet out here across this area of the world for now. This is the uh, you know, the Turkey region with a little bit of swarming going on. Nothing big. Just uh, Actually, it looks a little light in terms of earthquake activity right now. Is that, is that another 4.5 coming in up here? Right into the uh, Curl Camp Chaka Trench. we got all these earthquakes lighting up out here one after another. And I think it has something to do with all these deeper events we've seen here today. A lot of newer, deeper activity as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because I've seen something pop up here. I'm going to bring the dates down just a little bit. Yeah, I thought I had seen a five point, another 5.1 up there. But uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Bunch of movement there around the Philippines, so be on guard there. I mean, anywhere across the uh, Pacific Plate, you need to be on guard when things are on the move. And that, of course, includes California, too. Uh, let's go check out space weather, see if there's anything stirring up on the sun that we need to check up on. Really not a whole lot as far as flaring activity goes. We're way down into the B-flare category once again. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, coronal hole number nine right there, getting a little bit closer here to the... Uh, is this recent? 2349... No, this, even this image is behind about six hours or so. So that uh, coronal hole a little bit further over here towards the center area of the sun. Um, and that, of course, could could stir up earthquake activity. I mean, we've seen it happen in the past there. Those uh, magnetic lines there from the coronal hole activity or from the coronal holes themselves shoot out directly into space. Might have an effect here on the planet as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, and we should see some uh, high-speed solar wind stream there once it's into position, about 48 to 72 hours after that. Uh, we'll see the aurora stir up for as solar storms go. So we'll have to check back on that uh, as we get uh, a little bit closer to that date. I just hit the microphone. Sorry about that. Um, far as sunspot activity goes, you know, there's really not a whole lot happening out here. We do have this fairly large area across the northeastern area of the sun, but really not a whole lot of magnetic com complexity in here. Pretty stable looking. Uh, so the flare threat will remain low, very low. 1% chance or less for an X flare, even low in the M flare category at 15% chance. C flare around 85% chance here. Does look like we're getting into the C flare category a little bit right now, but really, you know, don't expect much from that sunspot area. Uh, let's see here. Stand by for just a second. All right, so Missy Mimi's here told me that there was an earthquake in Afghanistan right now. We were just talking how quiet it is over there. 5.7 earthquake coming in right now uh, to the uh, Afghanistan area. 939, yeah, about 10 minutes or so ago. I don't have any uh, seismograph stations uh, monitoring that area, but... 
you know, we're, we're definitely seeing some movement happening here in the last hour or so. Things are really ramping up. I told you, you guys, you know, when we get this deeper activity, it really sets things into motion out here. And we've seen at least three, maybe four or four deep earthquakes here today. Definitely uh, on the move out there. So there's that 5.7. Uh, that would be the second largest event so far today, right? Uh, would tie with the uh, 5.7 down here in the Fiji area uh, earlier this evening, within the last hour. <laughs> Just a lot of earthquake happening, uh, earthquake activity happening right now. We'll check back on that here in just a minute. Um, we'll see what the USGS reports for that 5.7. They, they may upgrade, they may downgrade. We'll have to see. Um, right now, let's chat about the weather. West Coast, I'm sure you guys have been hearing about it. We've got a series of strong storm systems here set to impact Northern California, and uh, it's aimed right at my neck of the woods here. We're going to have a pretty decent cluster of moisture coming in. Look at these impressive rainfall rates there. That's some heavy-duty rain coming in, some soaking rain. Beneficial for sure, but it might uh, stir up a little bit of flooding potential. And uh, Christmas, I guarantee you Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, going to be some major travel impacts out here. So if you guys are traveling, ooh, not a good time. Uh, definitely going to be um, lots of snow up in the higher elevation, lots of uh, rainfall. Goodness, so just be safe out there. And uh, that will continue as we head into the new year. It does look to be a pretty, uh, pretty significant uh, pattern out here. This is just one of the GFS models showing, you know, some decent rainfall out here. But there's a there's a bunch coming in. Check out this uh, seven day quantitative precipitation forecast. We can just check out the next five days and see uh, what it looks like. It's quite a bit, quite a bit coming in here. The orange area, man, the orange area right here around Sacramento area, maybe Chico involved there as well is about five inches and that's just 120 hours here that's the five day inland here into the like calusa county area they'll probably get about four inches uh, but that could fluctuate a little bit and if you look at the seven day forecast out here everyone's in the orange so we're definitely gonna be filling in here and this only goes to the uh, 26th we got much more much more rain coming in um following this pattern here so crazy we need it definitely need it though been waiting on winter to arrive, and uh, sure enough, it is hitting. Well, so far, no um, update yet on this earthquake over here around the Afghanistan area. Uh, this is reported by the EMSC model. Let's see what these guys are saying here on the uh, on the graph. Was that 5.7 back over here? Well, they downgrade to 5.6. Source parameters yet have not yet been reviewed by a seismologist, so um, could get upgraded, could get downgraded. Um, I don't see any signs of any big earthquake, you know, like a seven or eight pointer out there. So more than likely, this would be uh, it'll stick around in mid five or so. But uh, just be on guard, folks. A lot of movement happening out here tonight. And I'll say it again, when things are on the move, that's the time to be prepared. A lot of people think that, you know, when it's super duper quiet, that that's that's the time. It's basically any time, right? Whether it's moving, I tend to think that when uh, things are elevated out here, that that's more of an appropriate time to be prepared. Just because the way the plate tectonics work out here, when they're uh, shuffling around and get all this earthquake activity, that's when bad things can happen out here as far as bigger activity. All right, so we'll see you guys out here in the morning for the uh, Friday morning update. Made it uh, to Friday here, just about. A couple more hours here for, for the West Coast. And then we'll be in Friday. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here in the morning. Take care.